In this video, we'll talk about the Gram-Schmidt process, which is also sometimes called Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. So our goal for this process is, given a subspace of Rn, we'd like to find an orthogonal or orthonormal basis for W. And the Gram-Schmidt process allows us to start with any basis for W and use it to construct a new basis that is orthogonal or orthonormal, whichever one we want. So here's how the process works. So we start with a basis x1, x2, up through xp, and we assume that that's a basis for the subspace w. And then we're going to construct new vectors, which we'll call v's, v1, v2, up through vp, and this is the way we're going to construct it. So it starts off easy. The first v1 is just the same as x1. But then v2 is x2 minus x2 dot v1 divided by v1 dot v1 times v1. So what I want you to recognize is that this right here is the projection of x2 onto v1. And so when we subtract that, what v2 is, is the component of x2 that's orthogonal to v1. And so that's going to guarantee two things. It's going to guarantee that v2 is orthogonal to v1, and it's also going to guarantee that the span of v1 and v2 is the same as the span of x1 and x2. And now when we move on to v3, we're subtracting both the projection of x3 onto v1 and also the projection of x3 onto v2. So we're taking away the portions, the components of x3, that point in the direction of v1 or that point in the direction of v2. And so what will remain after we subtract those pieces is the component of x3 that's orthogonal to both v1 and v2. And so v3 will be orthogonal to both v1 and v2, and we won't lose anything from the span. The span of v1, v2, and v3 will be the same as the span of x1, x2, and x3, and so on. So when we finish this process, the v vectors will all be orthogonal to each other, and they'll span the same subspace that the x's spanned. And so that's the theorem. The theorem says that when we do this construction, those v vectors form not just a basis for w, because we already had that, but this is an orthogonal basis for w. Now what do we do if what we really wanted was an orthonormal basis? Well, in that case, all we do is first use the Gram-Schmidt process to find an orthogonal basis, and then we just normalize each vector to obtain an orthonormal basis. Remember that to normalize a vector, you just divide it by its length. So you take the v vectors, and you look at the length of each of those vectors. And if that vector isn't already a unit vector, you divide that vector by its length to create a unit vector. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have three vectors in R4, and we want to let capital W be the span of those three vectors. And what we want is an orthonormal basis for W. Now I'm leaving out the portion where we actually check that x1, x2, and x3 is a basis for W. What we would have to check there is that these three vectors are linearly independent. But we know how to do that by row reducing the matrix whose columns are x1, x2, and x3. So let's move on to using the Gram-Schmidt process to find an orthonormal basis. So here's what the process looks like. We have these formulas, so v1 is easy, that's just the same as x1, and then v2 is x2 minus this fraction involving dot products times the vector v1. It turns out that x2 dot v1 is negative 2, and v1 dot v1 is 6. And when we subtract, we get this vector here, and that's our vector v2. v3, same idea, is a little bit more complicated because we have a few more dot products to compute. x3 dot v1 turns out to be 4, v1 dot v1 turns out to be 6, x3 dot v2 is negative 8 thirds, and v2 dot v2 is 7 thirds. And when we multiply those, subtract, simplify our fractions, we get this vector here, which is our vector v3. So those three vectors form an orthogonal basis, and so if what we want is orth an orthonormal basis, we just have to take the lengths of each of those vectors and divide. So it turns out that the length of the vector v1 is the square root of 6, and so when we divide by the square root of 6, we get this vector, which is what we're calling u1. u stands for unit vector, so that's what we have here. Again, we divide v3 by its length. The length of v3 turns out to be 4 over radical 7, and so when we divide, we get this. And then v2, the length of v2 is square root of 7 over 3, and again, when we divide and do a little bit of simplification, we get u2. So u1, u2, and u3 is an orthonormal basis. It's essentially the same three vectors we found before, but we've shrunk or expanded them as necessary to turn them into unit vectors. So as you can tell, 
this isn't really a difficult process, it's just tedious. We have a lot of dot products to compute, we've got a lot of uh, lengths, and sometimes we get nasty square roots. And so typically we're going to use technology here. There's nothing really exceptional going on here. We're not even really row reducing any matrices except to check that the initial set of vectors is a basis. And many times that will be given to us. So in Mathematica, if we want to use this, we can use the orthogonalize command. So all orthogonalize is going to do is exactly the Gram-Schmidt process that we've done, plus it's also going to normalize the vectors for us. So we input a list of vectors. In this case, I've got the first vector x1, the second vector x2, and the third vector x3, and we put those in a list. So then when we execute this command, we get the orthonormal basis that we were looking for.